I'm going to show you how to create this really simple loop grid where the latest post is quite big. The next two posts are slightly smaller. And then after that, they kind of shrink down to be much more smaller. But it's a great way of like showcasing your latest post and the previous two before we get on to the historical legacy ones. This is really simple and easy to do with Elemental WordPress, Loop Grid, and a tiny bit of code. Let's start with the basics. We've got a really ugly looking Loop Grid here, six columns, and I'm currently showing 12 items because that's what I had when I showed it to you earlier. I'm going to reduce this down to six, and then I'm going to show you why I went to 12, and it will make sense, but I just want to show you that you might have been thinking of just going for six or eight or something, and why that logic won't work for you very well. So if you remember the layout, we had one big one, two small ones, and then we had smaller ones in a row of three or three columns below, below, below. I've got six columns. Why? Because I had to start thinking a little bit like, well, I want my items to occupy a certain space. So one item could occupy that entire space. If I then go with smaller ones, well, if I was to say go with, let me explain to you. If I was to go with that, you might go, well, that can work for you because one item will now be all of that in total. Your three smaller items will be just three items here. Great. But what about your two? Now I want two side by side. Am I going to dissect that gap there? That doesn't work very well. But what if we were to go with four? Oh, great. Now you can dissect them because you've got two groups of two. But what happens when I want to get to the next row, which is three? Hmm. Now I'm hitting into thirds and stuff. What about five? That could work, but again, we're dissecting through the middle. But when you get to six, I can have one, which is all of them. I can split it down the middle to get my two. And I can have groups of two, one, two, and three for my threes. So the six works really, really well for the layout I wanted to go for. By the way, we just have featured images here. I haven't set any height. Uh, I haven't really even set any width. I've just got the post title and the post terms. The magic comes with the CSS you now apply. So go to the advanced tab and you are on the loop grid. Okay, you're not in the template. You're on the loop grid. Okay, go to the custom CSS and drop in this bit of code, which will be in the video description. And if you're following our previous videos, this should all be elementary. I'm saying that by default, every basic item, okay, is going to be two columns and two rows. Okay, because remember the logic with the six columns. That allows me to get my big one, my two, and my three. I hope we're clear on that bit. Then over here, I've said 6n minus 5. I'm working with a grid of 6, okay? 6n means 6 times 1. n is equal to 1. 6 times 1 is 6 minus 5. So 6 minus 5 equals 1. That is going to be this item over here, okay? Item 1, 2, three, four, five, six. Okay. You will get used to this the more you think about it. So I'm now saying that item number one, which is six minus five equals one, your columns are six uh, wide and six high. Because we know there are six columns here because we set it when we did our layout, six columns. And then I want this to be the perfect square in effect, which is what it will do because it spans six across and six down. Sometimes I feel like I overcomplicate it the way I speak, but I hope this makes sense. Then I've said 6n minus 4. 6 times 1 is 6, minus 4 equals 2. So item number 2 is now going to be 3 along and 3 high. Remember, we got a grid of 6, 3 and 3 equals 6. So item number 2 is going to be 3, 3. Item number 3, which is the third item, 6n, 6. My, times one equals six, minus three equals three. Item number three is again going to span three and three. I don't need to specify what I do here because I've already covered it off over there. And that is now giving me the layout I want, but there will be a problem, okay? Well, the first problem is the height looks really wrong and dodgy. Don't worry, just go to your content, go over here. We've still got six and six, and where we have equal height, set it to be equal height. And look at that. As soon as you do that, it is now six, six, this is now three and three, and this is now two and two. Okay, this is now looking a whole lot better. But now let me show you the problem. We are working with the logic that is based on a grid of six. Okay, can you see over here? It's 6n. That means when you get to the next grid of six, the pattern starts again. So item number seven is now not in the first six, right? Just like, so one to six is your first six. 
7 to 12 would be your second six. 13 to 19, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, 18, sorry. 13 to 18 would be your next. God, I had to think about that then. 13 to 18 would be your next grid of six, okay? So every time it resets, the pattern starts again. So look what's going to happen if I now change this to be 12. So look, we got our first six, and now we get to our next six, and the pattern has started again. Now, if you want that, because you want a repeating pattern, great. But what if you don't? What if I wanted everything below here to always be the small version? Well, this is where you have to rethink your logic. So now my pattern is a grid of 12. I'm only ever going to show the latest 12 on here. So what you do is go back over to your logic, leave your top one as it is, but then change the calculation or the formula. So I'm going to change that to be 12, 12, and 12. I always want the first post. And look, this is going to mess up everything now because look, the logic goes all over the place because I've only got five, four, and three. I want the very first post to always be the big one. So 12n, which is 12 times one, minus 11 equals one. I want the second one to be it. So it's going to be 12n, which is 12, minus 10 equals two. I also want the third one, 12n, which is 12 times one equals 12, minus, and you get the pattern, nine. 12 minus 9 equals 3. And now when I look at my pattern, the first one is big, the second one, the third one. And then after that, everything now shrinks down. Ding, 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 ding. Of course, if I was to now go and add in, say, uh, show me the 14 posts, because my grid is now, because posts number 13 and 14 are outside of the 12, you would switch back to showing that. However, if you've set up your page to look a certain way, because when you have post archive pages, you might only show certain things. Maybe you've got a home page and you're not going to show every single post and pagination. You might just show your latest six posts. This is another way of doing something a little bit different. It feels like a bento style. And all we've done is add in CSS. And of course, don't forget when you go to your content, go and set it to be equal height. But think about your number of items, okay? Think about what you're going to show and if you want the pattern to repeat or not. I hope that made sense because you do have to think a little bit. Grab a bit of paper. It seriously helps. Just sit there, scrap, you know, scribbling down, working out your pattern. It massively helps you out. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.